Rattan has been used for centuries in furniture design, and it's still very popular today. But when I needed a rattan texture for a recent furniture prototyping project, I couldn't find exactly what I was looking for, so naturally I spent a ridiculous amount of time crafting my own method through trial and error. Today I'm going to share with you the material node setup that I eventually came up with in order to recreate the iconic woven rattan pattern. Now all you need to do is follow along with this tutorial, and you'll have an awesome texture that you can start using on your projects right away. We're going to start with a node group that we created in a previous tutorial. If you haven't seen that tutorial, I'll put a link in the description and also somewhere on the screen so you can pause this video and check that out if you need to. But we're going to start by adjusting our width. We're going to go to 0.45 on the width and we're going to bring our count down to 2. And then we're going to bring in our diagonal nodes right away. So I'll copy this node group. We're going to drop our count down to 1. And we can take from our incoming vector. We'll go to a rotate node and plug that in. We'll change this angle to 45. And then I'm going to connect our height to a maximum node. We'll also connect our diagonals to that. Now you can see right away the scale for the diagonals is off by a little bit. We actually want our diagonals to be at half scale, but since it's rotated at 45 degrees, that actually works out to be the square root of two. So we'll duplicate our scale node, plug it in down here on the diagonals, and we can just change our scale. We'll put in square root two. Now we also need to adjust our width a little bit. I found that 0.32 worked pretty well. Now all our strips are about the same width. We're going to go up here to our maximum node. I'm going to take this to a greater than. We're going to adjust this threshold down to zero. Plug this in over here. And then I'm going to bring in a mix shader. Use our greater than as the factor. And then I'm going to bring in a transparent BSDF. And we can plug that into the mix shader and also our principal BSDF. I'm actually gonna take all of this, put this in a frame. We'll call this shaders. And that's actually just so I can move this around easier. Now, the first thing I wanna work on is the height map. So I'm gonna take from our maximum node. We're gonna go way down here, plug that into a multiply node. This is just so I can fine tune the height a little bit. We'll plug that multiply into a bump map, go down to the height. I'm gonna bring this over here and we can plug that into the normal on our principal BSDF. Now you can see up here, our heights are a little bit too drastic at this point, which is why we have this multiply node. I'm actually going to drag this down. I'm going to go to 0.2. Now you have a nice subtle curve. We also want a curve going across each one of those strands. So to do that, we're going to need our coordinates from our node group. So I'm going to bring this to a mixed node. Put that right there. Connect our diagonals in as well. And for the factor, I want to use a less than. So we'll plug our heights into a less than node and then we can plug that right into the factor. Now we've got our coordinates for each of those strips. So I'll take that down here. We'll go to a separate X, Y, Z. We're gonna use the X coordinate because that's the one going across each one of those strips. Right now we're going from zero to one across each one of those. I wanna use a sine wave. So we're gonna to need to multiply our X coordinate. We'll multiply that by I, and then we can take the outcome from that to a sine node. And now we've got a smooth curve going from zero to one and then back down to zero. We can take this to a multiply add node. I'm going to take our original height, we'll add that in, and then we'll plug this into the height on our bump node. I'm going to go up to our mix shader, control shift click, and you can see again our heights are a little too drastic. So we can drag this down to say 0.1. Now again you've got a nice subtle curve. Now you could actually leave the height map as it is now, but I actually want to add in a little bit more variation just so it looks like a natural rattan. So we're going to take our mix node here, which is our coordinates. We're going to go to a noise texture. Control shift click on that so you can see what we're looking at. I actually want to stretch this noise texture along the Y coordinate on those strips and also a little bit on the X. So let's bring in a vector math node. Make sure we set that to multiply. Then I'll start with one for the X and Y. For the Y, I'm going to drag this down I think around point three works pretty well. And I actually want to stretch it a little bit on the X. So we'll stretch this out. We'll go to 0.5 on the X coordinate. And then we can take this to another multiply add node. And again, we'll take the height we had before, add that in and plug this into the height. And one more time, we're going to go up to our mix shader. And this one we can mix in much more subtly. So we'll go all the way down to 0.06. Now we just have a little bit more variation to make it look natural. Now there's one more thing that we need to address on our height map, and that is on this scale. So if I change our scale from one to 10 and then zoom in on our texture, you can see again, all those heights are a little bit too drastic. So the way we're gonna fix that, I'll bring in a value node and we'll use this to control our scale. So I'll plug this in to our scale, zoom out a little bit so you can see that again. And then I'm gonna plug this into a divide node and use that for the denominator. Then we can drag this all the way over next to our bump node. We'll plug our height into the numerator and then plug this into the height. 
And that doesn't change anything, which is the point. But when we change our scale back to 10 and zoom in, now you can see our heights look exactly the same as they did when the scale was just one. So now you can adjust your scale as much as you want without having to deal with the height separately. So now we can go and start working on the color for our texture. And the first thing we want to use for that is this position, because we're going to use that to make a little bit of variation between each one of our strips. So I'll plug that into a mix node, plug the diagonals in as well, and then we can use the same less than node to control the factor. And then we can plug that into a white noise texture. And now you can see we've got just different variation for each one of those strips. Plug this into a mixed color, plug that in right there, use that as the factor. And then I wanna make sure our color is plugged into the base color and we're using a mixed shader. So for this first color here, I'm just gonna drag this down into kind of a yellow color. And then I'll hover over that, control C and control V on the second color. And we'll just drag this a little bit more towards the red and a little bit more saturated. And we'll also drag our value down quite a bit. And I also wanna use a little bit of this noise texture to create some variation in the color. So I'm gonna duplicate this color node. We'll put that over here. I'm gonna drag this value down a little bit. And I can plug the factor from our noise texture as the factor here. And I actually want to sharpen that variation a little bit. So let's bring in a map range, plug that in. I'm going to bring our from min up to 0.25 and I'll bring the from max down to 0.75. Now you can see we've got some sharp looking grain color in there. Now there's one more thing I want to do for our color. You can see these strips that are towards the back are about the same value as everything else. We want to use kind of a cheap ambient occlusion to make each one of those darker. So to do that, I'm going to bring in a hue saturation value. We'll plug that in here. Then I'm going to take from our maximum node here. We'll plug that into the value. And you can see that actually darkens everything. And it also makes the back a little bit too dark. So I'll bring in another map range. And I'm going to change the from max to 0.5. That way it's not darkening anything that's above the halfway point. And that back looks a little too dark still. So we'll bring the two min up to 0.2. Now if I go over here and mute this, you can see the variation that that makes. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to check out some of my other content. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to create a completely different material, starting with the same node group that this texture is based on. So be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on that.